This is uh, some of my old, well it's not old, it's paprika peppers that I've dried out. Some of that in there. Um, smoked jalapeno, chipotle powder. Make that good. Mo better. Now we got the uh, oil, we got some carrots, some peppers, and some onions. I'll put all the carrots on the bottom. Now I'm going to just start sprinkling the, the uh, peppers over the top of the uh, squirrel. Then take the onion, do the same thing with it. There you go. Stick some up in there between their legs. There you go. Get them all covered up good. That's all going to cook down. Make for some really good eating. Okay, what else do I want to put on that? I put some uh, Lowry's garlic salt on there. Put some of that on there. Put some parsley on there. I'm just trying to get rid of the parsley, just to be honest with you. I think you can get that at Sam's for like four bucks, and I've been using it for like a year, and I can't really tell that I've used any of it. So there's what you end up with. Squirrel that's just about too far gone. It's just about to fall apart to the point you can't do nothing with it. So that right there is what we're after. Full breakdown. If you try to do this too early, you will not be able to get the meat off like this. This meat is just pulling apart, falling apart. Just want to be sure you don't get any of those bones Squirrel have some little fine tiny bones like that. The main thing here is just to get it off the bone. Once we get it off the bone, we can go through and shred it finer or take some of the big pieces out or check it for these these little tiny bones. That little bone right there, you can see it. That one would get you. That hang up in the windpipe right there. All right, y'all see how to do this? All right, there's a leg. Let me show you. Let me finish this leg real quick. The hip bone. You can get real tedious sitting here doing all this. Let me um. Let me show you a backbone. There's really a lot of meat on the back of a squirrel. A lot of times people just eat the quarters, but if you take a uh, take this here as a backbone, there's your your ribs. You can see those there. All this meat, I'm just going to set that over there. All this is uh, bone-free meat. I'll pick through that again, but if you can see here, I'm just going to shred it apart so I can feel for bones. There's a little bone right there. So I'll set that one out. This is coming right along the top of the backbone. I can feel it. Kind of like a floating rib, if you will. So that's all good, clean meat. All right, that's all good, clean meat. I'm filling with my fingers for bones. I'm not filling any or finding any. So there's a backbone. And this would be like your, uh, this would be the back strap on a deer. That's the back strap on a squirrel. And I'm here to tell you, it's just as good. By cooking them whole like this, we get to pull that all off real slow. This is the inner tenderloin, much what you might call the hanging tenders in a beef. That's all good meat right there. I'm going to set all those over there. Now, here's the other half. Front shoulder coming off.
There's that big piece of, this is the flank, this is the rib meat. There's a couple of floating ribs right here at the end that have come off, so I'll set that aside. Here's the upper back strap that goes up into the neck. We'll pull all that off. A lot of meat there. Just run it through your fingers. You can feel bones if they're still in there. If you pulled off something you don't want to eat, see there's a clean rib cage just like that. Now, back over here to the, uh, to the rib meat, you can see the rib bones coming out right there. So I'll just run my fingers through there. You'll feel a few bones down here towards the sternum. These are like uh, floating rib bones. Them had just about cooked enough they were falling apart and you wouldn't even know they were bones. Okay. There's one squirrel just about completely done. So we'll go ahead and strip down this front shoulder. There again, you remember, you've got two bones in the calf and two bones in the forearm. That's the forearm there. It's pretty crusty. I'll just go ahead and pitch it all. Here's the shoulder. I just want to strip the meat off that shoulder blade. Toss it. Tell you, that piece right there is a little overdone. I better eat it now. All right, that's one squirrel done. There's the other shoulder blade. I'm just pushing the meat out from the bones. Man, that's good. What this is, is frozen turkey stock. You can put your turkey stock after you make it in uh, quart bags or pint bags, however much you think you need at a time. This is a pint freezer bag. That is turkey stock from Thanksgiving. It's still good. I used some of it just the other day. So it's frozen. I set it out when I, a couple hours ago when I started cooking the uh, squirrel. But it's not come near thawing all the way. But it don't have to. So I'm just setting it in there. That is fat that rose to the top. Now, as you can see, I still have some little brown bits down in here in the bottom. I didn't get it completely clean, but I don't need to. Because as, I, as this thaws and all this squirrel meat cooks, I'm going to stir it around. Get that pepper out. Now, the key here in this squirrel meat, that piece is really, really burnt. I probably ought to eat that. Yep. The key to squirrel meat is to get it so tender that you can pull it apart easy, but not that it's so pulling apart that you just got a pile of bones in the bottom. You want it to still be somewhat intact. So that's what we have here. We have squirrel meat that was able to be pulled apart. All right, we're going to put the lid on that, and we're going to set it on top of the stove on low. We're going to let the uh, frozen chicken or turkey stock melt down, and uh, we'll let it come to a simmer, and then we'll add our biscuits. Wait a minute. That piece is burnt. I better eat that. Mmm. I better quit looking. It'll all look burnt before I'm done. All right, now let's mix up our dumplings. I got me a Incredible Hulk. Incredible Hulk bowl. I picked the green because I thought you'd see it better. See the, uh, this is just regular old Bisquick. You can find it anywhere. There's even some knockoff varieties. I'm just going to shake some in here. Now, I'm not measuring this because I don't know exactly how many dumplings I'm going to need, but I would say that right there is probably a cup and a half. And so I'm going to add to that buttermilk. Just regular old buttermilk. And uh, I'll just kind of use this to slow it down, make me think about it. There, let's stir that around and see what we come up with. We're just wanting to make a dough. It doesn't have to be fancy. Bisquick has 
uh, the leaveners in it, you know, baking powder, baking soda, that sort of thing, to, uh, to make it rise and puff up. We just want to make a, a nice dough. And, you know, everybody makes chicken and dumplings different. I know some people, their, their dumplings look more like, uh, they look more like uh, noodles to me. I mean, it looks like chicken noodle soup. And I, I've never been a big fan of the, the noodle dumplings. Um, so I, this is what I do it. This is the way I do it. I'm going to need a little bit more. And it ain't going to be much, but just a little bit more. You never really know. Uh, you could use the recipe for biscuits on the back of it, which calls for, you know, a certain amount of flour, I mean, a certain amount of Bisquick and a certain amount of milk. And uh, the only problem with that is what you run into is, you know, that makes a pan of biscuits. You don't need a pan of biscuits for your, uh, for your dumplings. You just don't, you're not going to need that many. Now, if you're making a bunch of dumplings, by all means, you know, use that recipe. I, I just know I'm not going to need that many. I'm going to need a little more milk. And it's better to creep up on it than get too much. And I, I'm, I'm intentionally stirring this with a spoon. I don't want to get in here and knead this. I'm not making bread. I just want a, a dough that will come together. And that's starting to come together. You see how it's starting to kind of all come to a ball? I have some crumbs down there in the bottom. I'm trying to get them stuck in here too. But I'm using my spoon to do the kneading. There we go. Okay, I'm going to call that good. Now that's come together there's nothing there but bisquick and buttermilk all right let's set that right there okay let me show you what we got for let's have a look at our uh, our squirrel now you can see it's been boiling I've had it boiling for about an hour Well, I had to pull y'all away a little bit because you were fogging up. So we back the camera off and turn the zoom on. There, you can see it. All right, just chunks of squirrel all in here. Squirrel's getting really soft too. Let's um. There's a big glob right there. See when I push that with my finger, how it just smashes out. That's the way you want it. You want it where it's little resistance. It's not meat mush. It's still stringy. It tastes amazing. What does squirrel taste like? It tastes like squirrel. Okay. Let's get this up to a boil. I'm going to turn the heat up. I want to get it up to a boil. And then what I'm going to do is start spooning off some uh, some dumplings okay now we have a pretty good boil going here's what I'm going to do I'm going to stick my spoon in here and I'm just going to get a piece of dumpling like this and I'll, I'll get this out of the way this is this is all we're doing I'm going to drop those in there you want them small they're going to puff up so about that size if you want to roll these out in balls you can but as you'll see they start puffing up pretty quick so, I'm going to set the bowl down, turn the heat down, then you'll just see me dropping them in there. I was told a story by an older man who lived through the Depression a few years ago. He said... Uh, when President Hoover was uh, president back during the Depression, he said they called rabbits and squirrels Hoover hogs because that was the closest thing to ham or bacon you were going to get during his presidency. 
He said his brother was so good, he could look at a swamp rabbit track and tell you exactly how many biscuits it would make just by the size of its track, or how many dumplings it would make just by the size of its track. Now, that's all of our that's all of our dumpling mix right there. So there's our dumplings. They're going to get a little smaller. Pieces of them are going to break off. They're going to thicken the broth a little bit. We need to put the lid on it, turn it down to low. We gave it a good stir. We, you want to make sure they've all been underwater at least once so that they're cooking and they don't have raw dough sitting up there. Now, we've got it down to a little bit above a simmer. Let's put the lid back on it and let it cook for a few minutes. I'll turn you back on when it's ready. Okay, it's been 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know. Let's have a look in there. Alright, I'm going to say that is good. I broke one of those apart a while ago and it's cooked all the way through. So, uh, I washed our little uh, Hulk bow. So let's reach down in here and get us some. There's what you're looking at up close. You can see the uh, big chunks and little chunks. It gets kind of stringy, scattered around in there. Some little small dumplings like that, some medium size. There's a couple of big dumplings. Let's take that to the table and see how she tastes. I put pepper and salt in there when you were not looking, but I always like to add pepper to mine. I like a lot of pepper in it. I'm kind of a pepper junkie, especially when it comes to gravy and dumplings. You can't make biscuits and gravy and not just load it up with pepper. So, there's what we're dealing with, and I can tell by the steam, it's way too hot. Let me just get some of the juice. I brought the salt over here, but I, I think it's good. We'll set the salt aside. How about just a piece of squirrel? Let me see if I can get that down me. Mmm. You know, I was just commenting on Instagram just a minute ago. Somebody was saying every squirrel I've ever had was tough. And squirrels are stringy creatures. I mean, their, their meat is tough. So it lends itself to this kind of eating where you, you know, cook it like I did in an oven, in a Dutch oven. You could do that in a crock pot or a pressure cooker. But you cook it and get it tender enough that you can pull it off the bone easily. And then as it cooks for an hour or so in the liquid, when you add your dumplings, then it just gets even more tender. And so this right here is, it's still enough there. I can tell it's meat. It's not like mushy mush, but it's plenty it's tender. Man. I know everybody has their own way of fixing dumpling, dumplings, but where I grew up in western Arkansas, this is the way I always ate them. It's the way they served them at my house. I go to deer camp. These were the same dumplings they served there with, with squirrels, so this is what I'm used to eating. I'm sure you, you like yours done some other way. That's fine. You just keep them up north where they don't know how to cook. Down south, just like this. Mm. Man, that is so good. You know, it's not very polite to have y'all watching me eat like this, so I can't offer you a bowl, so I'll just turn you off. Thank you guys for watching. Go kill you a couple tree rats.
even if you live in the city, get you a BB gun. Get a couple of them in the backyard. Do exactly what we did. And enjoy what I'm enjoying. Mmm. Man, that is good.